in those days back in Iowa where I was living, um, deer were not common. And you could hunt all year long. And if you saw one or two deer in a whole year, you thought you'd had a really good year, let alone getting a shot at one, let alone actually getting one. Yeah. But um, I had a chance when I was in college and before that too to do some deer hunting up in Wisconsin. And uh, that's where I shot my first deer. I would say that Kodiak bear hunt was a pretty enjoyable hunt. I was there for a long time. Um, and I hunted with some really famous outfitters that had been in Alaska since the gold rush days. And um, after the gold rush settled down, they went to work in a, on one of the islands off the coast of Alaska called Kodiak. And they worked out there um, at a salmon cannery. And uh, later on, they, they uh, hired themselves out to help the Division of Wildlife in Alaska repopulate some of the streams in, on Kodiak Island with salmon. So they would, um, they would put salmon fry, the young ones, mm -hmm. in uh, milk cans, 30-gallon milk cans, and put them on their backpack and carry them up to the beginnings of the stream and dump them out there because a salmon goes back to where it was born when they get ready to spawn and and uh, so they if they if a salmon doesn't know where it came from they don't know where to go and so that's why they had to put those small salmon clear at the upper end of those streams so that as they would grow up and move down go into the ocean for a few years they knew how to get back so that they could lay eggs and start all over again and um, that's what those guys did and, and then the rest of the year was hunting season and so they hired themselves out as hunting guides and um, they became they, they were the oldest hunting guide operation in Alaska and uh, it was fun listening to those guys talk about all of the stories of their life experiences um, they were there during the big earthquake uh, that happened in the 60s. Um, I remember him talking about the mountain on the west side of, the, of Kodiak Island that during that earthquake, the whole side of that mountain was sloughed off into the ocean and they went over there and the, the beach, there was gold laying everywhere on the beach. And the tides are so high and so fast that they dug as much of that as they could and got it above the where the tides were at so that they could sift through the stuff and get the gold out of it. Uh, and then once the tide came in one time and went back out, it was all gone. That moose was, I was in Alaska. I was hunting with a friend of mine from Denver. And uh, he's, he was the guy that was doing my taxidermy in those days. He did the taxidermy on that moose. Mm -hmm. And um, I had shot a caribou, that one, uh, during the first part of the hunt and he had been up there a couple of weeks before me and said he saw a moose in a place and wanted to know if anybody wanted to go get it so I said I'd go and we got over there and it was in a downpour it just raining like crazy and we had our rain gear on and we're all hunkered down and that moose walked out of a bunch of willows two or three hundred yards away and I shot it and it takes a long time for two people to take a moose apart and get it ready to walk back to camp with it because uh, it's really a job for about six or eight people. Mm -hmm. And so we got what we could carry. We had to cross a, a river that was about six foot deep. And there was a tree that had fallen across the river and we used that tree as a little bridge to get across it. And um, we, when we got the moose taken apart and headed back, we got lost and couldn't find that crossing. We'd, we'd, we got there crossing over that tree, but when we went back, we couldn't find it. So we wandered around most of the night, finally holed up underneath a spruce tree, and when it got light the next day, we were miles away from where we thought we were. But we weren't very far from another crossing that he knew about, which wasn't very far from our camp. 
So we went and crossed that, and then the next day we went back to get some more of the moose. By the time we got back there, the river had come up so far that you couldn't see the tree across it anymore. So we had to cut poles and use these poles to balance ourselves going across this river. And by that time, it was just a roaring turn about eight feet deep. And um, anyway, it was pretty interesting getting the rest of that thing back across there. And uh, But we ended up doing it. And then, after all of that, that pilot was also a couple days late getting us in, and all the meat spoiled. The, the head and the, the, the hide and everything was fine, but all that meat spoiled. And I, I wanted to bring all that moose home, and I didn't get a chance to do it. That's so that's, that's that moose. That's, that was in Alaska. And some of the African things, Africa is a, um, it's a fun place to go. I hated the travel getting there. It takes so long on an airplane. You're sitting in your seat for 12 or 14 hours mm -hmm. without being able to do anything. But the hunting over there is spectacular because there's there's always game in sight of different kinds. You know, if you go hunting in the mountains here, the number of species of game you might see in a week's time is you count on one hand. In Africa, there's 10 times that many, you know, so you might see any one of 50 different kind of animals or gazelles or whatever in, in any given day. And that's, that's kind of what makes Africa special. Um, of course, there's dangerous animals in Africa, but I was disappointed a little bit that the place I went, there weren't any dangerous animals other than leopards. They had leopards there. but there aren't any lions in that part of Africa and there aren't any elephants and hippopotamus and stuff. I was hunting in some rocky desert country in Namibia and it's country that looks a little bit like Wyoming, you know, that, that kind of habitat. So anyway, but Africa is pretty cool. In recent years I've done a lot more deer hunting and there's um, there's five recognized species of deer in North America. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've managed to try and hunt all of those and I've gotten several of each of those. <clears throat> and then there's another subspecies in Mexico called a Carmen Mountain Whitetail. And these two deer back here on the wall are Carmen Mountain Whitetail and they're real rare. Uh, they only live in one valley in the Carmen Mountains and I've been able to go down there twice and shot those two deer. So that was that was kind of fun. They they were they look just like a cow's deer from Arizona. A cow's deer is on a scale of one to ten, they're a ten as far as difficulty of hunting. And I'd have to say that the Carmen Mountain is a one. They're 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 not very wary. You can when you see one, you probably get him. You you can find a way to get up to him and get him. So they're they're just they look like the same deer, but they're not. These are easier to get than a cow's deer. Cow's deer are really hard. Um, I've got all of the caribou species. There's five different caribou species in North America. And uh, I've managed to get at least one of every one of those. I've got more than one on some of them. And um, on this wall back here is, are all of the rest of the, this wall and that wall, all the rest of the deer species. Um, there's four sheep species in North America, and I've got three out of the four. I've never shot a, a desert ram. And um, then I've got a lion, and I've got a, a couple of goats. Things like that are also been good, memorable hunts. And last year, I hunted in Texas, and I've never hunted down there for deer before, but it was a different experience because there's no public land in Texas. You have to hunt on private land. Mm -hmm. And that means that the private landowner gets to call the shots on what kind of animals you can hunt and where they are and where you can go. Um, in another month or so, I'm going to go try and hunt mountain lion. And that hunt will be conducted with um, a pack of dogs. And I've never done that before, so I'm just doing something I'm just trying to do some different things than I've have done over the last 50 years just yeah. to see if 
what are, what the rest of it's all about. You can't tell it from your camera, but I've also got a big collection of waterfowl. You can probably see some of them back here. I've got every single duck and goose in North America in my collection. And I've got every one of the quail and every one of the grouse and partridge in my collection. Almost. That's. I don't have all of the ptarmigan, but uh, I've got some of them. But other than that, I've got all of the game birds in North America. Turkey, um, I've shot three, three out of the four species of turkey in North America. Uh, I've never shot the one from Florida, and I probably won't. It doesn't really interest me. <laughs>